Here we go. Happy Thursday. Welcome into Bears Now by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham. Let's have a day. Busy show on tap. Lots of draft talk. Caleb Williams draft visit details emerging. Lots to discuss. Shout out your city. Let us know where you guys are tuning in from here on a Thursday. Got a few people already hanging out in the chat. Shout out to Overtron, Jam Cuber, Joe Hollywood, Fear the Squid, and Goat MG. Let us know where you guys are tuning in from as my screen is just frozen all of a sudden. Let me refresh here. We got Dan in Fort Wayne, John in Antioch, Illinois, Shane, Carroll, Iowa, Leroy in the UK. What's up, Leroy? We got Jaden in San Diego. I think I'm going to San Diego here in a couple months. Really? Yeah, you ever get, you ever been out there? No, rolling? but uh, I've heard it's 75 and sunny every day, and that is my type of weather. Yeah, it's it's a classic uh, retirement city. I Why mean, are you it, heading out there? Uh, just, just yeah, you know, we haven't. It's not finalized, finalized, but one of Hannah's family friends is out there. We can stay for free, so it's kind of like, why not go and just make a little vacay out of it? But nice, nice. Um, that's the plan. Uh, that's the plan. June? Also going to one of your favorites, Miami. Ooh, next now month. That is fun. Uh, my brother-in-law's vet school graduation is there, so we'll be when there are you for going? three or four days. Mid-May, like the sixteenth, I think. Interesting. Are you going to be down there? Could be. Uh, no. Second I'm round not of the playoffs. Be, but it, it's going to be the playoffs. Boots maybe, on the ground. Maybe I'll, I'll sneak into the uh, <laughs> yeah. building. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll. I'll be in the suitcase. We'll figure. Yeah, we'll we'll throw you in. We'll throw you ah, in the. Ah, uh, Ty Man we'll, knows what to we'll, say. We'll tie. We'll tie, we'll tie you to the back of the plane. We'll a get live you. watch party in Miami. Well, that, sure that'd get, be sick. I'm sure we'd get tons of people there. <laughs> Chuck and Destin. Destin's a great. You ever go to the Destin? I've I, never been to Destin. Destin's nice. I, you you uh you got the Fort Lauderdale connection going. Uh, you going? He loves Miami. Yeah, busy busy few weeks. Of course, the draft first. Can't wait for that. Um, I'm also going to the Bay Area actually next weekend because I have a wedding I have to go to. Oh, so. you're you're all over the country. Oh, it's too much, dude. I'm like I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not looking forward to it. Sounds uh, like fun to me. Well, it's the it, it will be, but it's also the first time flying uh, with a uh, with a uh, Ooh, one year old. Yeah. So that'll be uh, interesting to see how that goes. So, all right, uh, pick a receiver: Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors. Who would you guys rather have? Also, the live poll today, 61% of Dunze, 39% Neighbors. They're very close. I, I like Neighbors a little more as a prospect, but I do understand the, the Dunze love because I think he actually fits, like, gives you a different look with his size compared to DJ Moore, who's around six foot, Keenan Allen, who's going to be playing in the slot primarily. Uh, obviously, Neighbors can play on the outside too, but I like both these guys. Who you got, Adunze or Neighbors? Zay says, Roma Adunze. Uh, I'm not sure why you're spamming L, Jaden, but uh, feel free uh, to uh, to chill out there. Jay Hen throwing FGB in the chat. Josh says, Malik Neighbors. Dan does as well. SB Gaming going with Roma Adunze. Donald, Malik Neighbors. Uh, we got uh, Shane with Neighbors. Neighbors is literally DJ Moore. We need a tall receiver. I mean, two DJ Moore sound good to me, but uh, yeah, I certainly would uh, would like a, a tall a tall receiver as well with the Dunze. I heard an interesting comp the other day, Rolly. I'd be curious to see what you think about this. Devonte Adams for a Dunze? Do really? you see that as all? I tell you what, for their some, releases off the line are both very good. I'll tell you this, Harrison, for a wide receiver that is pretty at this point consensus wide receiver three in this draft. Um, it's very funny to see the two comps be Devontae Adams and Jamar Chase. Well, if these are his comps, then probably shouldn't be wide receiver three, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he'd be wide receiver one in a lot of drafts. I mean, I do think that, like, all three of these guys would have easily been wide receiver one last year. I get it. It just cracks me up, though, because you yeah. see Jamar Chase, you see Devontae Adams. They're like two top five receivers in the Neighbors' NFL. comp is Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. Well, like, Sure, that's a very good comp, and if he becomes OBJ, you're going to be happy. But, like, Devontae Adams and Jamar Chase, better than Odell Beckham Jr. ever was. So Yeah, no, it's it's a fair question. I, I do think it's one of those where if Adunze does hit his ceiling, he probably gives you a little bit more than Neighbors. I just feel like Neighbors 
He's so explosive that like you could probably get more out of him right away, but yeah, I, I don't think you can really go wrong. They're they're both very, very good prospects. Uh, and Game Time is a very, very good app because it is the best ticketing app on the planet. And look, there's nothing worse than trying to purchase tickets online and it just being too complicated or the or the ticketing app not giving you uh, your tickets in time as you're waiting to get it digitally. Well, with Game Time, that's not going to be a problem. You're going to get your tickets in no time. And uh, you know how I know that? Because uh, their specialty is last-minute tickets. And I do mean last-minute, day of, hour before tip, 30 minutes before a concert starts. You can get your tickets. They'll get it to you digitally on your uh, phone via email. You throw it in your Apple Wallet. Boom! You can go to the event. Go check out some White Sox, Cubs games. By the way, White Sox tickets, I mean, they're basically uh, letting you get in for free, and you're going to get the best price available with game time. Check it out right now. Sports, concerts, theater, comedy shows. you got, got to get your tickets online these days, and game time makes it easy for you. Download the app today. Use promo code chat sports, all one word, chat sports. That's going to get you $20 off your first purchase, check out Game Time. You are not going to regret it. All right, uh, what is your confidence level in Ryan Poles? Scale from 1 to 10, 10 being very confident, 1 being not at all. 1 to 10, what's your confidence level? Sammy in the chat says, Rolly, 26 likes. Get to work, buddy. We'll get there. We uh, The like monster is warming up. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, he, he is going to come out soon. And since he wasn't here on Monday, something tells me he's going to be a little angry. So we will see. King Venom says 10, negative 792. That's not very good. Jason says 9. Sammy says 7. So does Dan. Scott, 9.9, 9.5 from uh, Donald. We got 8 from Killing the Villain. Johnny, 7.5. Chef, 10. Mike, 8. Charles, 9. Bum of Wall Street, 7. Johnny says 8. Mo says 6. 9.5 from Jay Hen, DJ Harad, 8.5, uh, 9.9 from Zay Marquez. I think there's reasons to be confident. He In two years, he's done a really good job of turning this roster over, tearing it down, building it back up. It's not, it's not a finished product yet, but uh, I think uh, the Bears are in a far superior place than they were at the end of the Ryan Pace era. You know who's really bad at their job? Who? Maurice Jonesville. He sucks. Did he put, put out, out a mock, mock draft today? His mocks one. every year are horrific. They're they're hilarious. He has five quarterbacks going in the first six picks. Oh man! Michael Penix going number six to the Two Giants. Giants. Um, he is something else. Penix is better than McCarthy. Who said that? He has JJ going number three to New England. Mm, that would not make you happy. I would no longer support the Patriots. I think I could actually say that now and be and mean it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> true. And uh, soon enough, people will know why. Andre says, neighbors could learn from DJ and Adunze could learn from Allen. Both would be great picks, and both would be put in good positions to succeed. Well, whoever you pick is going to be able to learn from two really good receivers. Um, they both have a lot of wisdom to share, Keenan Allen and uh, DJ Moore. So, yeah, I think uh, – I think whoever you bring in here, A, is already going to be a good prospect, and B, is going to have two veterans, especially Keenan Allen, but both who have done it at a high level for a long time, which the Bears have not normally had because uh, uh, their receivers throughout their history, outside of the little blips here and there, have uh, not been uh, ones to remember. So uh, certainly a valid point, Andres. Appreciate the super chat. We appreciate all the support. And an easy way to support is to like the video we got to get to 120 likes. I mean, I mean that's come just, on, folks. You that's know what? just what we no, got to get to. We're not going to set out 120, Harrison. Oh, boy. we got to get to 140. That is exactly half the number of people watching. 140 likes, and we could get underway with our show. We have a very fun show planned, four different segments on tap. If we want to get into them, hit that like button. Come on. It's free content. We're live twice, three times a week at sometimes. Ow, I just cracked my hip. Hit that like button if you appreciate the content we're providing here. Uh, too many free throws the other day. Dude, that was sick. That's the most <laughs> I've ever made in a row. That's why 40, I, 40 I, is really good. I couldn't believe it myself, Harrison. Think about like, like 40 is a ton. Think about how many 100 is. That's two and a half times what you did. Yeah, I know. I like, mean, that is unreal. I, I do think it's something to it, though, is it's like I just got in such a rhythm, and it's just like it actually felt like I couldn't miss. 
And then yeah. I did. And then I was like, well, that's So it was exactly 40 when you missed? Yes. Oh, okay, wow. So I, if, in my text, I said this, but every time I do a workout and I'm shooting or whatever, I always end on 20 free throw attempts to see how, what I shoot. And I usually shoot 15. 15 is my baseline. Yeah. So I'd consider myself. So if it's less than 15, you like I'll, again? Like or? that would be as bad as it gets. So usually you're like 15 to 18? I'd say 15 to 18 is my usual. I, I mean, I've been shooting 19s. I've, I'm like a pretty good shooter, so free throws are relatively easy for me. Once you shoot a couple, it's kind of like you can get going pretty easily. Well, so the thing is I made my first. I missed my second. Hit the like button. And then I made 18 in a row to finish 19 of 20. And I was just like, well, I'm kind of on a hot eat right now making 18 in a row there's no way that i can end by making 18 in a row and just leave the court yeah. so then i went and then i evidently made 32 in a row to get to 40 well, in 20, a row total 22. and then i missed 41 yeah well 40 in a row is a lot man 40 in a row is a lot i was sitting there to myself i was just like if i get more to likes. 100 i'm gonna be pissed i was just like i don't know i was going until i missed and I didn't want to miss, but I also didn't want to, like, do this and, like, get to that high of a point because no one would believe me. Uh, I'd believe you. 40, I think, is believable. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It happened. I'm not lying. But, like. What we're referring to, I don't know if anyone knows who Young Mantis is, former Barstool employee. He, uh, he was doing this 100 free throw challenge stream on YouTube, and he got to 99 in a row four times. But the 100th one, he had to do blindfolded and could never make it. He, 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 got, he rimmed out a couple times with the blindfold, but uh, that's tough. That's tough. Emiliano, Bengals traded uh, are up to nine for Fashanu or either – or Bowers. Are you saying, like, they should do that? Like, swap with Cincinnati? I assume this didn't just happen. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think we would know about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Cincinnati's like, a sneaky trade-up team because – especially if they – decide to trade T. Higgins. A, they could want to replace him at receiver, or they could use another offensive lineman. They could go get Brock Bowers. I think Bowers in that offense would just feast. Uh, Chase is your number one outside guy, then have Bowers work the seam. So, yeah, I mean, look, if if you could get a second-round pick from Cincy and maybe like a third as well to move from 9 to 18, that, that, that wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be bad. We're eight likes away from getting this terrific show eight started. Likes away. Eight likes away, folks. Come on. Because here's what we got coming up, which we'll start once we get to 140. Uh, we do have the latest Bears news and rumors. Some more details emerging from Caleb Williams' draft visit that we want to get to. Uh, Bears draft visits tracker. Every visit that we know up to this point, um, we will uh, kind of dive into that. We'll focus on the top 30 visits and then kind of just inform you guys of the other ones. Uh, live Q&A, use hashtag Bears or Super Chat to get your questions on the show. And uh, this last segment, which I didn't tell you, Roly, uh, on our Monday live stream, we did whoever is the MVP will get to decide a segment for the next live show. And Michael Horowitz came out of the woodworks and said, talk about why the Bears haven't been able to have success with quarterbacks in the past. And then I kind of added the detail of, okay, let's do that and then turn it into why it could be different this time with Caleb Williams. So we will do that. Uh, shout out to 140 likes. We'll hit Daniel's super chat and then we will get into the show. First time super chatter from Daniel. He says, trading down at nine should not be an option. If you're getting a blue chip player, I'm tired of hearing how few picks the Bears have and they need uh, to trade their pick. I agree with you. Like They do not need to trade down. Am I open to it in certain scenarios? Absolutely. But it should not be like, you have to trade down. Like, I've said it. If there's one or two blue chip players left at nine on the Bears board, they should just pick that player because um, these teams tear that stuff out. And uh, both Poles and Flues have talked about getting a blue chip player. So that is definitely something that they should prioritize. All right. Appreciate all of the likes. And let's get this thing rolling here on Chicago Bears Now. I'm Harrison Graham from Chat Sports. Here's our Bears Now rundown today. Caleb Williams visit details emerging as he has come and gone from his top 30 visit in Chicago. Let's explore Roma Dunze versus Malik Neighbors. Who would you rather have? What direction should the Bears go in if somehow both are available? 
Or could the Bears trade down for Brian Thomas Jr., the other LSU receiver? Lots to dive into, lots of draft stuff here on today's show. We're also in the midst of an April subscriber battle here at Chat Sports. Two top channels from the last couple of months, Raiders Report, Bears now trying to take down Mitch and his minions over there at the Raiders Report. Let's get some more subscribers. It is free Bears content to hit the subscribe button. Hey, if you want to come back in a week and unsubscribe because you're not a fan of the show, that's all good. But give us a shot. It's free. We're not going to charge you a dime. All right. Let's get into the show. Caleb visit details emerging here. We had a few that came in last night, uh, but more have dropped today as that visit officially came to an end last night. Uh, do want to kind of dive into what we know. Uh, did have a they did go on a Tuesday dinner at Sophia Steak out in Lake Forest. Let us know in the comments if you've been there. Get, scale it one to ten how good it is. Um, Bear staffers were there. Some high level ones in the front office. Some players were there, which I think is pretty significant as well. Uh, and then on Wednesday, he and some other guys, they brought him for top 30 visits, uh, were at Hallis Hall, touring the building, kind of seeing what's up. And uh, then Caleb left Chicago. And here's what we know for sure among the players that were there. Uh, I told you guys we would tell you once we found out more information. Well, per Albert Breer, two names that he just dropped were DJ Moore, which I like a lot, Tyreek Stevenson, who I think is emerging as a young leader, and several others, who knows who those players are, they attended the dinner with Caleb Williams per Albert Breer, and I think DJ Moore being there is big, and I think it's important. He, of course, was very vocal about wanting to keep Justin Fields in Chicago, and for good reason. He had a career year. He's been through a lot of different quarterbacks in his career. We all understand that, but it's also very important for him as a young leader, as the number one receiver, 1A now, if you want to count Keenan Allen, obviously, to turn the page and, you know, become buddies with Caleb Williams, who is going to be this team's quarterback. So I think putting a name to a face is always good, and these guys need to build that chemistry. And look, him and Justin built it quickly. Hopefully that can happen here as well as uh, getting that connection going on and off the field is going to be vital to this offense's success. Uh, some more information here. Ian Rappaport saying potential number one overall pick. Uh, Caleb Williams made his top 30 facility visit to the Bears today. He was in town for dinner last night as well. Likely his only visit as Chicago hones in. I think that part's pretty significant. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's even going to visit other teams. Maybe he decides to visit Washington, but uh, I would be pretty surprised if I'm being honest. Jordan Schultz adding this as well of Bleacher Report. He says, Williams, I'm told, made an excellent impression on not only the staff and front office, but the entire organization as a whole. The visit should further solidify him as the number one overall pick. And look, I've said it for a little while, just more breadcrumbs kind of proving what's going to happen. It'll be official in 21 days. Uh, Mike Florio even threw out there that technically the Bears are allowed to sign him before the draft if both sides come to an agreement and that they decide to draft the number one. Now, that has not happened since the new CBA in 2011, so I doubt that takes place. But uh, we all know where this is heading, whether you know you like it or not. I think most people are on board at this point. But uh, Caleb Williams will be a Chicago Bear, and uh, it's only a matter of time, and that time is 21 days. Now, what jersey number will Caleb Williams wear in Chicago? I think it's pretty significant that it has not been announced yet that Keenan Allen is wearing 13. So... Maybe that means that they're saving it for Caleb, or maybe Tyler Scott somehow keeps that number. Who knows? But what jersey number do you think Caleb will end up wearing in Chicago? I would guess 13, but uh, predict it for us down in the comments. All right, another big draft visit today as Caleb's wrapped up yesterday at Rome. Adunze in the building at Hallis Hall having his top 30 visit in Chicago. So... You're seeing these start to trickle through as these teams are bringing in top prospects. This photo, of course, from the NFL Combine as uh, they were dapping each other up. And look, I think they've probably texted some. Maybe they overlap. Maybe Rome got in on Wednesday before Caleb flew out. Who knows? But uh, I do know this. Most mock drafts that you see nationally have the Bears getting Caleb at one and Rome at nine. Now, we don't know how it's going to play out. Maybe Rome goes higher than Malik Neighbors. Maybe... Uh, you know, the Bears don't take him. Who the hell knows? But we all know that adding another receiver is definitely a real possibility. And Roma Dunze out of the top three guys, including MHJ and Neighbors, 
seems like the most likely to fall to Chicago at number nine. So uh, we'll see if that plays out. We'll explore Roma Dunze versus Malik Neighbors in just a few moments as uh, there's some news on Neighbors with the Bears as well. But I do want to tell you guys first about today's sponsor. That is game time. Getting the best tickets for the best prices available has never been easier than it is with the Game Time app. Download it today. Search Game Time in your app store. Use promo code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off because there's nothing more frustrating than having a difficult time purchasing your tickets. I know a lot of you guys that watch our show, maybe you're not the best with technology. Maybe uh, you're used to getting physical tickets. Well, that's just not reality anymore. It's all online. It's all digital. That's where Game Time simplifies it for you. They show you the best deals available. You can Purchase your tickets with your Venmo balance if you want to. They're going to show you the exact vantage point, and they're going to tell you step-by-step step when you purchase the ticket how you get it and how you present it when you get to your event, whether that's a White Sox game, a Cubs game, a Bulls game, a Bears game, during football season, a concert, anything else. It is easy, and you can buy tickets with game time minutes before the event starts, and you're going to get it in time to get into that arena. So, again, download the game time app right now. Search Game Time in your uh, app store, or you can click the link in the comments and description. It'll redirect you to your app store. Plug in the promo code CHATSPORTS once you create your account, and you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. Take advantage. It's game time. Trust me, you are not going to regret it. Okay, David Capman of ESPN 1000. He also dropped the nugget that Malik Neighbors has already had his top 30 visit with the Chicago Bears. There's been kind of a debate among Bears fans, who's the better player, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, who's the better fit? And the answer to those questions could actually be different. I think Malik Neighbors is a slightly better prospect. I don't think there's a huge gap. There's certain things that would give Rome the advantage, like he's a bigger player, obviously. You could probably do some more red zone stuff with him if you wanted to. Uh, but I just think with Neighbors' explosiveness, I think it's a little bit better than Rome's. Uh, overall, I think he could have a slightly bigger impact right away, although I do expect both to hit the ground running in the NFL. But you could argue Adunze's fit with the Bears is better because Neighbors is kind of similar to DJ Moore, and Rome gives you that true X body where he could be your X wide receiver with Keenan Allen in the slot and DJ Moore as your Z. Now, Malik Neighbors, I think, is pretty likely to be gone before the Bears pick at nine because – there's been reports from Dane Brugler and others that some teams in this draft have neighbors higher than Marvin Harrison Jr. So if that's true, I'd be shocked if he made it to nine. Uh, I don't think Adunze is in the conversation in draft circles for wide receiver one in this draft, but neighbors appears to be. So, uh, you know, the likelihood is if someone gets to nine out of those top three receivers, Adunze would be that guy. But let's just play devil's advocate. Let's say somehow both of them are on the board, or maybe the Bears trade up and both are available. Who would you rather have? Would you rather have Roma Dunze or would you rather have Malik Neighbors? Type RO for a Dunze, MN for Neighbors. I'd be thrilled with either. Uh, I like Neighbors a little bit more, but a Dunze could, you know, be a better fit if he reaches his potential. So sound off in the comments and make your choice. If the Bears decide to trade down, which again, they should only explore that if the top three receivers are gone. I think if one of them is there, they should pick them. But let's say they are gone and the Bears do get some offers. How about trading down for Brian Thomas Jr.? Uh, this is random, but I literally had a dream last night that the Bears did this. They traded down for Brian Thomas. So I was like, okay, we'll talk about it. It's a somewhat realistic scenario, and we've talked about Thomas a little bit here. He's very good. I think he's wide receiver four in this draft. Some would say Adonai Mitchell out of Texas, but I would lean Brian Thomas Jr. I think he showed a little bit more consistency and is a little bit more of a home run hitter as a vertical threat. And I think especially with the Bears already having two proven reliable receivers, like I'll take that home run threat and Brian Thomas is my number three X receiver, which would be just a great fit. It really, really would. Now, he's not as good as Rome. He's not as good as neighbors, but he's just a notch down. Like I think in a lot of drafts, he'd be the first or second receiver taken. Like last year, he could have maybe been the top receiver off the board. He really could have. So – uh, he's very good. He'd be a great fit if you traded down to the mid-teens, snagged him, and picked up a second-round pick or something like that. So um, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to that. Again, I wouldn't do it if one of the top three receivers is there at nine. But if they're gone and you don't love the board and you want to move down a few spots, get some extra capital, then Brian Thomas certainly wouldn't be a bad plan B. 
All right, guys, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. We will continue to keep you guys in the loop with the latest Chicago Bears news and rumors. Three weeks away from the NFL draft. This is the time to join the channel. All right, continue to sound off on a Dunze versus Neighbors. What do you guys think? Chicago sports fans says Neighbors. Ron says a Dunze. Polls getting close. 54% of Dunze, 46 Neighbors. MJ Black says Brian Thomas is a stud. He's really good. Alex's Neighbors won't be there. I don't think so either. I think he'll be gone. I think he'll be gone. Xavier says Rome a Dunze. Um, Shane says Malik Neighbors. Scott says Malik Neighbors. Mario says Adunze. Can he play? That's all that matters. Um, I don't know what that might be in reference to Caleb as we have more Caleb debate going in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm exhausted by the, the Caleb stuff, to be honest. The, the, the negativity around it. Uh, Pow Pow says Neighbors. Oh, Don Burr's in the chat. Don Burr's in the chat. Let's draft Don Burr. Don Burr, he's a secret Bears fan. He knows that. He knows that. You go into the draft, Don Burr? It's in Detroit. Let me know. Let me know. Oh, Geezer with the super chat. Other than the Justin Herbert rumor, F all trades, I'm comfortable with bl chips blue or pink, just win. Um, by the way, the Justin Herbert rumor, like, I don't. I wouldn't even put it in the rumor category. That's just like, I don't. What would you call that, Rolly? Just like, un, like unrealistic speculation. Like yeah. it's not even a rumor. It's like, not it, it, yeah. Like, look, I get Harbaugh may have a hard on for McCarthy, but like, the I don't even think the Chargers would allow him to do that. <laughs> like, if he's on the board at five and be like, oh, let me trade Herbert and it would I'll certainly draft be JJ. fun. I mean. They would be bad if they did that. Like, they're already probably not going to be great this year, but... I would personally enjoy them trading Justin Herbert. Two. <sighs> There's a team up in the Northeast. The Bills are moving on from Josh Allen? Sure. <laughs> you would like that, too. Yeah, I would. That would be nice. Oh, man, yeah. Herbert's not getting traded. He's not getting traded. Glenn says you should try... Sure, you can call and say, hey, you want the number one pick for Herbert? They're going to say no. So, um, You think they say no? Yes. Really? And by the way, if it was I'm one, not sure. And by the way, I'm not sure the Bears would do it, as crazy as that sounds. I, well, I don't know if they would say no. You get Caleb Williams on a rookie contract. Well, here's why they'd say you no. You also take Neighbors or Harrison Jr. at five? The reason they'd say no is because his dead cap hit would be $110 million. No. Now maybe you're willing if you split it over. T if you pull a Russell Wilson and just it, the problem with doing it is like even if you split it over two years, so you're going to be unable to add talent around your rookie quarterback for two years, basically. Yeah, I didn't think of the money aspect. That's of it. the problem. Like honestly, if they hadn't paid Herbert yet, I would buy the rumor. Like I could actually see that, but his contract ki starts to kick in this year. I, I just I can't see them doing that. Don Burr says he's going to the draft. All right, Don. Do the Lions have a first-round pick? I don't even remember. I think they do. It's in the 20s. They should. Let me see. It's what, 28, 29? 28, 29. They have Actually, 29, the 29th pick. So. Yeah, Bills are 28, Lions are 29, Ravens are 30. wonder why it's not 30 or 31, Don Burr. Yeah, because they collapsed in the NFC mm. Championship game. Mm. You, you really hate to see that. Mm. You really all right. Um, by the way, Don Burr, you should hold a sign that says, it's me, Don Burr. And you should DM me at HGRAMNFL that sign. I'll put it on the show. I really will. It's me, Don Burr. If you do it, I'll put it on the show. All right. Um, let's get to our next segment here, which is a Bears Draft Visits Tracker. Let's dive into it. It's Bears Now by Chat Sports. My name is Harrison Graham. On today's show, we got a Bears draft visits tracker. We're going to explore every top 30 visit, plus 
other prospects Chicago has met with, either at the Senior Bowl, the Shrine Bowl, the Combine, Pro Days, etc. Now, disclosure, filming this Thursday afternoon, so it's possible uh, if you're watching this on Friday or something like that, that a few more have come in, but uh, this is where we're at as of 3 or 4 o'clock on Thursday. Now, before we get to some of these visits, the players they've met with, as of now, the Bears have four picks. Obviously, the two top 10 picks, 75th pick, 122. We'll see if they add or subtract from there with trades. Um, a lot of GMs, scouts, draft experts have kind of just said that this is a four-round draft, so I'm not surprised that the Bears have gone with a lighter approach here in terms of overall picks, but they still have the flexibility to move around if they choose to do so. Now, before we get to these visits, go check out some of our recent draft content. I took uh, some trade-down targets in a video. Who could the Bears draft if they move down from number nine? My latest mock draft, Caleb Williams and who. I did trade down in that mock draft, and then uh, I reacted to ESPN 7-round mock as well. More draft content to come, but if you subscribe, go to the content tab. You can check out these videos, plus a whole lot more. All right, we'll kind of, you know, pick our spots on who to spend more time on here. A lot of visits to dive into, but Caleb Williams, of course, uh, completed his top 30 visit uh, this Wednesday, and uh, we got some information that emerged. Uh, he met with some uh, players at dinner and some Bears staffers. DJ Moore was there, reportedly, so was Tyreek Stevenson, several others, according to Albert Breer of Monday Morning Quarterback. I really like to see that DJ was there, start to build that bond, as it's pretty clear where this is headed, uh, that they are going to draft Caleb Williams. Uh, for those who have been to Sophia Steak and Lake Forest, uh, that's where uh, they went to dinner. Uh, and uh, like I said, those staffers and players were there. Pretty cut and dry at this point. It sounded like the meeting went really well, and uh, it's all about just turning the card in. Caleb Williams will be the pick. Kind of reveal these two together. Malik Neighbors and Rome Adunze have both been at Hallis Hall, obviously, uh, two of the top three receiver prospects in this draft, along with Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, both really good players. It's kind of pick your flavor, right? If you want the more explosive, shifty player, go Malik Neighbors. If you want bigger body, X uh, type of receiver in Robin Dunze, who's also shifty in his own right for his size, uh, you could go with the Washington product. I like them both a lot. I think there's a better chance that Dunze falls to nine, considering some Draft boards have neighbors as wide receiver one over Marvin Harrison Jr. I do not. I think MHJ is the best in this draft, but uh, keep that in mind. Now pick a wide receiver. Who would you rather have? Type RO for Roma Dunze or MN for Malik Neighbors. Go ahead and drop an initial down in the comments. Dallas Turner, the e <coughs> excuse me, the edge out of Alabama. He came in with the crop along with Caleb Williams, by the way, so that's certainly interesting. That could be a combination at 1 and 9 as well. Turner, 10-sack season a year ago for the Crimson Tide. And I've kind of said this. I think out of the top edges, which include him, uh, Jared Verse, and Liatu Latu, I think Turner has the most upside because he's such an explosive athlete. He's got super long arms. He's a tick undersized for a 4-3 end, but he plays bigger than that and plays the run really well. So... I would not be surprised at all if the Bears ended up drafting this guy. How about Shop Robinson, the edge out of Penn State? I don't think he's realistically in play at number nine. I think he would be in that trade-down category later in the teens, maybe early 20s, depending on how far they move down. But he's a traits guy, really explosive, really quick, uh, kind of checks those boxes on the RAS score that we know pulls an Eberflus value. Brock Bowers has taken a visit as well, the Georgia tight end. I wouldn't completely rule out taking him at nine or in a trade-down scenario if he's still there because we know Shane Waldron loves 12 and 13 personnel. He's going to utilize tight ends, but I do think bringing Gerald Everett on board lowers that possibility, uh, but uh, he's definitely a guy they should look into. Now, I do think Ben Sinnott could be a higher possibility, potentially at 75 or if he falls to 122. Now, I did see recently that he could be as high as tight end two in this class after Bowers. That would surprise me a little bit with Jatavion Sanders and a couple of other guys in the mix, but he's definitely a draft riser right now. Has uh, been rising up those boards, and for good reason. Versatile player, willing blocker, catches the ball well. You can play him at fullback some, so if you were to draft him, you could cut Kari Blasen game if you wanted to and save some money that way. He could kind of be your tight end three fullback hybrid uh, and your future tight end two, maybe even a future starter. Uh, down the road, depending on how long Cole Komet is here, which still a very young player, just got paid. I don't think Komet's going anywhere. 
How about Jaquan Jackson? If you're unfamiliar with him, get familiar. He's a speedster out of Tulane. Doesn't, you know, fear off too much from Darnell Mooney's game. Quick, he can help in the return game. Uh, could the Bears keep the Tulane pipeline uh, going? Matt Forte, a really good player for this team. Darnell Mooney had some good years here as well. Jackson, again, with the new kickoff rule, could benefit from that. Could go higher in this draft because of it. Could be fourth-round option at 122. I certainly would not rule that out. More top 30 visits and others to come, but uh, let's tell you a little bit about our sponsor first. That is game time. Listen, the Cubbies, the White Sox, the Bulls, they're all in action at the same time this time of year. It's a great time to get out the house and go to some events. Here's the deal, though. you got to buy your tickets, and it's all online these days. And sometimes it's tough. It's frustrating. Not with game time. Uh, they have cut out the red tape, all that garbage you have to run through. They've made it a lot easier, and it's just a very user-friendly app. They're going to show you right when you pick a certain team or event, what's the best price available? What is the best value? Uh, you can filter based on you know lowest to highest prices or different uh, categories as well. They're also going to have snapshots of every seat that are available and exactly what your vantage point is. So if you're unfamiliar with the stadium or with an arena or a concert venue and you're like, Man, this price seems good, but I don't know. You know, am I going to be able to see? Uh, you'll have uh, the still shot photos, and you'll be able to tell. Download Game Time today. They're most known for their last minute ticket prices dropping off, so I encourage you to wait till the last minute. Get twenty dollars off your first purchase with Chat Sports. Download Game Time. Lowest price guaranteed. You are not going to regret it. Link is in the comments and in the description to click and redirect you to the App Store today. Create that account. And use promo code Chat Sports. I found this one interesting. Tyler Guyton, who I believe the Bears have met with multiple times now. I think they met with him at the Senior Bowl, uh, the Combine, and at Hallis Hall. So at least twice, maybe three times, which you always find that very interesting. This is, an, this is a traits play. His tape is pretty inconsistent at Oklahoma, but his traits are off the chart. He's big. He's athletic. He's got long arms. But the play is inconsistent. But if you do trade down and – you could afford to have him be your swing tackle for a year, and then maybe he replaces Braxton Jones in 2025. So certainly an interesting one. I, I'm not as high on this idea because I want my first-round pick to be a clear day-one starter, and I'm not sure Tyler Guyton would be. So um, I, I, I like them doing their homework on this guy because he's a wild-carded offensive tackle, but uh, certainly wouldn't take him at nine, and I think you'd have to trade down at least somewhat far uh, for me to be on board. Karen Omega G, the offensive tackle out of Yale. Another traits play, small school guy, but he's been rising up boards. I think he's probably more of like a round two guy. If he's there at 75, that's great, great value. I would love to take him there. The Bears don't currently have a second round pick, so obviously uh, keep that in mind. Graham Barton, one of the fastest risers recently. I think he's emerged himself as possibly the best interior lineman in this draft. And what I really like about Barton is I think he could play all five spots on the offensive line. He's a multi-year starter at left tackle at Duke. Played some center early in his career, which a lot of scouts think he'll play in the NFL. His arm length is just under 33 inches, though. So, like, they're on the shorter end, but they're not, like, crazy short. Like, it's not a Caleb McGarry situation, who's been a good tackle in the NFL, by the way, but he's got, like, 31-inch arms. So, I think they're long enough if you need him to play tackle. But I love the versatility. High IQ player. Um... If you trade down to like 20 or something and take him, I certainly would not complain. He could compete for your starting center role, could be your top backup this year, and then next year he could start at, you know, whatever spot on the line is open, if I'm being completely honest. Zach Frazier, who's just a fun player, a bully at center, um, probably the second best center in this draft after Jackson Powers Johnson. Some like him as the best, though. Uh, late first, early second, that's kind of where uh, he's been mocked. Uh, for the most part. So again, I think it would be a clear trade down scenario where you're getting more capital. But remember, I don't think the Bears have their long-term center on this roster. So do not be surprised if the opportunity is there for them to take someone who could be their future starter. Which offensive line spot would you rather draft? Would you rather get another offensive tackle in here, either for competition for Braxton Jones or just as a flat-out upgrade? Or would you rather get someone on that interior? Remember, don't have a long-term answer at center. Tevin Jenkins in the final year of his rookie contract. Nate Davis's deal, uh, he's through 2025, but you can get out of that deal after this year. So uh, where would you rather attack, tackle or interior offensive line? Go ahead and let us know. Some more top 30s here. Cameron Kinchins, who was a part of the 
Caleb Williams, Dallas Turner group, uh, the safety out of Miami. Didn't test that well. The Bears don't really need a safety, so that's kind of an interesting one. Cam Hart, uh, a lot of uh, corners here out of Notre Dame. Uh, Nehemiah Pritchett out of Auburn, freak athlete, one of the best in this class. Elijah Jones is as well. Andrew Phillips. A lot of these corners have a lot in common that the Bears bring in. Crazy athletes. So, again, corner not a top need, but like, you know, 75 or 122, if they want to bring in a guy who's going to be an elite special teamer and developmental corner, uh, I would not be completely shocked. Also, Dylan Lobb, the running back out of New Hampshire, who I actually saw at the Combine out at dinner one night. Uh, but uh, he's been he's an interesting prospect here. He could be a guy that if they ended up trading Khalil Herbert on draft day, they draft a guy like Lobb to be his replacement in this rotation. I'd probably rather just keep Herbert, but uh, Lobb could be a – candidate to be a kickoff returner too. So remember, with the new kickoff return rules, uh, those guys who can do that have more value because the uh, it's you're going to see more returns uh, back in the game. If you want Bears draft coverage daily, join the family by subscribing. I always say this, hey, give us a week. You come back a week from now and you're like, ah, I'm bored of this. I don't like this channel. I'll unsubscribe. No big deal. Uh, it's 100% free. No harm, no foul. Uh, take a chance. Come with us. We would love to have you aboard. All right, all of the rest of these draft meetings are a combination of they either brought them in as local visits or pro days or at the Combine or at the Shrine Bowl or at the Senior Bowl. I'm not going to specify where they met with each one of these guys. Just know they have met with them in some regard. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, all of four of the top six quarterbacks in this draft. The Bears have obviously met with a lot of these guys to do their due diligence. Darius Richard, I do know he was a – uh, HBCU visit out of North Carolina Central. Intriguing potential UDFA type of guy if you want to bring in. Same with Quincy Patterson. I think he qualifies as a local visit. I think he's from uh, the state of Illinois. Marshawn Lloyd, obviously uh, Caleb Williams' teammate, running back out of USC. Aiden Robbins out of BYU, the running back there as well. Blake Watson, Luke Skokna. Uh, I think Skokna was local as well. A couple more running backs. Jiren Mitchell, running back at a Butler at the FCS level. Jatavion Sanders, tight end out of Texas. McAllen Castles, tight end out of Tennessee. Uh, again, I'll be curious to see how much they emphasize tight end if they take one in this draft. They still need a third guy there, but they could easily just bring back Mercedes Lewis. Xavier Worthy, Brendan Rice, a couple of receivers. Worthy, obviously, the speedster Rice, Caleb Williams' teammate. Cam Johnson, a local one, wide receiver out of Northwestern. Josh Cephas, the UTSA product. Uh, obviously, you get to the big fellows here, Joe Alt, uh, Notre Dame, a potential target at nine. Same with Olu Fashanu, although I'd rather trade down a few spots to get him. Blake Fisher, another offensive tackle out of Notre Dame who's very experienced. So I think he could be an intriguing guy in the middle of this draft. Julian Pearl, local out of Illinois. Garrett Greenfield, the uh, offensive tackle out of South Dakota State. Troy Fountainew, who's really versatile, can play tackle or guard. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, arguably the best center in this draft. Trevor Keegan was a local visit, the interior lineman out of Michigan. Uh, Cedric Van Pran, the center out of Georgia. Andrew Ram, the interior lineman out of Oklahoma. Hunter Nuzad out of Penn State. You go to the defensive side of the ball. Byron Murphy, who's really rising right now. I think he could be in play at number nine. Dwayne Carter out of Duke, day two probably. Same with Mason Smith out of LSU. Deshaun Mallory uh, out of ASU. Latu Latu, probably not at number nine, but a potential trade down target. Jared Verse could be in play at nine, also a trade down target potentially. Adisa Isaac, uh, the other edge out of Penn State, who's got good traits, could be a day two type of player, maybe late round one. Jalen Harrell out of Michigan, probably day two, day three type of player. Uh, I am going to completely botch this. Mema Ninjagmeta, uh, edge out of Wisconsin. I think that qualified as a local. Javante Jean-Baptiste, the edge out of Notre Dame as well. He was local too. Jablanski Green Jr., South Carolina State edge. Justin Blazik, edge out of Wisconsin, Platteville. Javante Jean-Baptiste, who uh, we're just giving him credit twice uh, because he's that cool. Uh, the edge out of Notre Dame. Keith Randolph was a local one as well. I think um, he could be a late day three guy or maybe a UDFA target if he slips out of the draft. Tyler Jackson, linebacker out of Northern Illinois. And his Rakestraw Jr., the corner out of Mizzou. That's an interesting one. Max Melton, freak, sp freaky speed. Uh, his brother plays for the Packers, Bo Melton. Rashad Williams, corner out of Texas Tech, really good athlete as well. Reddy Stewart out of Troy and Kalen Carson, corner out of Wake. One more corner here, Tavion McCarthy out of Mercer. Uh, remember when Mercer beat Duke in the NCAA tournament? That was a lot of fun. 
Kalen Bullock, safety out of USC. Again, another USC product. Trey Taylor out of Air Force. Isaiah Williams out of Syracuse. Mark Perry out of TCU. There you have it. Trying to get you guys all of the information. Spend a little more time on the top 30 guys because those visits are a little more intimate or a little bit longer, obviously. So there you go. Name a player you want the Bears to draft. You can just say Caleb Williams. You can throw a sleeper in there. I don't care. You can drop 20 players in the comments. Who do you want the Bears to draft? Go ahead and let us know. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because we will continue to cover everything draft-related around the Chicago Bears. News, rumors, visits, trade buzz, draft targets, mocks. We're going to do it all. Appreciate all the love and support. All right, we're going to get to your questions momentarily, so you go ahead and fire away with hashtag Bears or Super Chat. Someone says Vikings will draft Penix. I would rather, if I'm the Bears, maybe this is a bad take, but I truly, I believe it. I would rather the Vikings trade up for McCarthy than stay at 11 and end up with Penix. I get McCarthy, for whatever reason, is higher on teams' boards, but... I would rather the Vikings use capital, move up for JJ, than stay at 11 and get Penix. I really would. By the way, Paleo and Tito, we have your $5 Super Chats. We are going to wait until the mailbag. We'll get those in the mailbag. Shout out Paleo and Tito. We'll lead off with those. So, Jimbo says JJ is a G. I'm just not a sign on him, man. He was asked to be a game manager in college, which is fine. It's not his fault, but... There's just not a lot of evidence that he can be a high-level quarterback soon. Like, I think he needs to sit for at least a year in the NFL. So, I think Panic's in the right situation can have success early. So, yeah, he's, he's got injury issues. That's, that's, that's the issue. Like, if, if, if he had a clean bill of health, I think Panic's would be in the top five conversation. I really do. I really do. All right, Those Rolly. questions, then. Oh, yeah, we need some more hashtag Bears questions. We've got a Boy, few super we. chats. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if the software. Uh oh, is it not pulling? Julian DC Viper Dude, getting some in there. there. I'm getting a little off. Harrison, reset. what are the chances you think we get MHJ? Throw hashtag Bears on that, Jay Hen. We'll Ooh, answer it. I tell you what, we're low. We what? are low on questions. Are these late, late ones coming in here? Um, so DC Viper, that one's Julian. In. Okay. We need more hashtag Bears questions. There's another one from Jaden Matthew. You can hit some of those earlier super chats if they're actually good questions. Well, or did those disappear? Those disappeared. Those disappeared. That's okay. Because I had to reset to get the two. To get these. Ones, oh, that's cool. So. Code Ray says hashtag Bears are the Bears back. Maybe. I hope so. Chad Little hashtag Bears, not hashtag Bears now. Hashtag Bears. All right, we got a few coming in here. Brock sends one in. Joe Hollywood. Shout out to Paleo. Charles says we need a three-tech. Derek. Assuming all these come in, we should have a good amount now. This doesn't have to be the longest either. Just get to 10 is fine. Jahan, Jaren. All right. Appreciate all the questions. We're going to answer as many as we can. We'll start with those two new super chats and keep it rolling from there. Today's Bears Mailbag is presented by Roan. Get yourself some awesome clothing from Roan and their machine washable. Don't have to go to the dry cleaner anymore. Use code chatsports at roan.com slash chatsports. It's R-H-O-N-E to get 20% off. Before we get to some super chats, we got F. Marsh, who's a player in the first round we're not talking about enough that the Bears could draft. It's a good question. I mean, I think we've talked a lot about the legitimate number nine pick type of options. Uh, but, uh, which are these players, by the way? These are a lot of them. Roma Dunze, Dallas Turner, Fuaga, Jared Verse, Byron Murphy, Olu Fashanu, Brock Bowers, Latu Latu. You know, if something crazy happens in Malik Neighbors fall. Like, we've certainly talked a lot about most of these players. Uh, but I think some sneaky like trade down type of targets that we haven't spent a ton of time on. A guy we haven't talked about at all, actually, which I think we should because he's uh, just had a top 30 visit. Graham Barton, the interior offensive lineman out of Duke. 
very versatile player. I think if you trade down into the late teens or early 20s, he could be in play. Jackson Powers Johnson, obviously, still don't have a long-term center. Both Barton and JPJ could be that. Adonai Mitchell out of Texas, Brian Thomas Jr. We spent some time on those guys, but they could be some players. Chop Robinson, traits guy, you know, Matt Eberflus would be interested. So those are some names to monitor. But again, if they stay at nine, we kind of know who the suspects are at this point in time. Now, name a round one sleeper for Chicago. Now, obviously, if you go in the first round, you're not a sleeper, but a round one sleeper for the Bears, someone we're not talking enough about. Drop his name in the comments right now uh, and let us know who that player is. Shout out to Paleo. He sends in a super chat. We appreciate the five. He says, if we get a second, your thoughts on wide receiver Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky or offensive guard Christian Haynes from UConn in the second round. I think Corley in round two is a, t a tick rich for me. I, you know, I think he's probably more of a round three guy, but he's going to be one of those prospects where some players or some boards have him top 50. Others have him, you know, closer to 100. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't shock me. For me, it's a little rich. Christian Haynes, I do think second, third round guy. He's really athletic. He can maul. Some think he can play center in the NFL. If the Bears are one of those teams, that would kind of move him up a few spots. So, yeah, if you end up getting a second round pick, those are a couple of guys that could be in play. Tito with the five. Appreciate the super. He says, is it just me or even with the number one pick training camp on how the Bears look on paper? We got to wait till week six to actually be excited for this team. I mean, that's really up to you to decide, right? Like, I'm pretty excited right now, but in terms of, like, excited about what you think they can do in 2024, like, yeah, we're going to have to see them play a game or two, obviously. We're, it's all projecting right now, but – you can see the vision. You can see the roster come together. We saw it in the second half of last season. After an 0-4 start, they went 7-6 and the rest of the way. I mean, if they went 2-2 two and -two to start the year instead of 0-4, they might have been a playoff team. So, you know, it feels like they're close to at least being a playoff team. But, yeah, I mean, it, I, I can't blame you guys if you want to pump the brakes and, you know, kind of see how the first month, month and a half goes. Julian Gonzalez, expectations for Tyler Scott this season. That's a tough question to answer right now. That would be easier to answer after the draft because do the Bears add a receiver at nine? If they do, then he's you know competing for wide receiver four. But if he has a chance to be wide receiver three, then you know he could be a real contributor. I will say this. I want him to be a guy that when he's on the field, you at least feel like, okay, he could make a big play here. Like That to me is like his ideal role where you can – Use him in jet sweep action, where if he hits the hole, he could go for 20-plus. Want to send him on some go routes, on some screens, get him the ball in space. He's an explosive player, and we saw him come up with a few big plays late in the season last year, but there were some drop issues, some route running that needs to be tightened up, knowing where you're at in the field like that Atlanta game. Remember, Justin threw a nice ball to him in the back line of the end zone, but he was out of bounds. If he knew where he was at, it should have been a touchdown, so... Yeah, like, can you be a guy that, you know, changes two or three games with a big play? Like, that, that's kind of what I'm hoping for and just some overall better consistency. You want to talk consistency. Let me tell you about Roan. The best men's closet wear out there because that's what Roan did. They revitalized the male closet because, you know, things have gotten stale in men's fashion. And, you know, Roan has really upped their game with their classic looks and their comfortability their four-way stretch fabric is awesome the commuter collection has it all you got the dress shirts you got the casual polos you got the pants you got the joggers machine washable that's the game changer here you don't have to go to the dry cleaners you can wash these clothing items in the washing machine air dry them boom you are good to go so listen get 20 percent off at roan.com slash chat sports use code chat sports and guess what you're going to end up saving money with that code. And in the long run, because A, these clo this clothing is high-quality material. It's going to last a while. And B, no dry cleaning. You don't have to add that to your monthly bill. You are good to go. I can't recommend Roan enough. I've been with them for a couple of years. They've been fantastic. Roan.com slash chat sports. Link is in the comments and in the description. Click and shop today. It's R-H-O-N-E.com slash chat sports for 20% off. Hashtag Bears from Lalo. How do you feel about Tez Walker? Roly, you want to chime in on uh, Tez Walker? And by the way, I don't know if you saw this because you weren't on our live show on Monday when we did a mock draft. I went YOLO. I took him in the third round. Oh, 
Is he the most boomer bust receiver in the draft? Yeah, I think he can be good, but it, to me, it's still about if he gets in the right system. He's very questionable with his route running. His hands are also spotty. But with his 6'1", 6'2", frame and his 4'3", 6 speed, there is a lot out there that could be liked. I just am not the biggest on yeah. his hands and route running ability. This is coming from someone who had the root form at North Carolina. So even I am a little skeptical. Here's This is kind of my justification for it. You already have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. So it's kind of like, hey, just go run 10 go balls a game. <laughs> is that number three guy? Maybe you catch one of them. So um, I don't love the player, but he's a guy that, like, I think he could be like an MVS where like two or, three, two or three games a year, he, he changes a game for you. Which is why he should be going late second in that third round, yeah. not the initial first round buzz he was receiving. Luckily that went away after the, the senior, senior bowl. bowl. Yeah, everyone saw right through it after that week performance. <laughs> yeah. Route running's not great. But number three, number four receiver, certainly not bad. Chad Little here. Would you trade number nine and seventy five to Tennessee for seven if Rome or Neighbors is there? I'm open to it. I certainly am not against it. Um it really just depends how confident you are one of them falls to nine and how high they are on your board. If one of them's there and they're a top five player on your board and you feel like that player is like a 10-year player for you, like it's hard to argue against it, right? But even though this is a draft where you don't need a ton of picks, in my opinion, I still would not I, – I don't love the idea of picking at one and seven and then not again until the fourth round. So um, I'd have to really like the player – like, if it's neighbors, I'd be more inclined to do it. If somehow Marvin Harrison is there at seven, I'd definitely be inclined to do it. But um, it, it would have to be for a player you're extremely convicted about. Papi Chulo sits. Appreciate the super chat, my friend. He says, does the new kicking rule eliminate muffed punts? I don't think so. What would the, what would the new rule? I don't know why the new rule would eliminate that. So, uh, no, I don't think it does. Kevin Bates, what do you think trade compensation would be for Khalil Herbert? I don't know, fifth, sixth, something like that. And in a draft that's not considered deep, I'd probably just keep him unless it's a pick in the top four rounds, which I don't think it would be. So, uh, look, he's a, he's a running back on an expiring rookie deal. You're not going to get a ton for him, even though he's been a really productive kind of number two back for this team. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be a part of these live mailbags. you got to subscribe. got to turn on notifications and join our live shows to get your questions in. That's the only time we do these live mailbags. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Alex Weddle, give me Newton at 15 in a trade down. Jerzon Newton. I think he's a, he's a prime trade down candidate. I did a video of trade down targets. He was one of them. Um, I'll be curious to see where he goes. He's got a workout coming up. I think next week, maybe, he's going to work out for teams because he's been recovering from a surgery. So I'll be curious to see how he looks in that, how teams kind of rate that workout, where he's at in his recovery process, because uh, that's probably costed him some money. You know, coming into the draft process, he was considered the top defensive tackle, but I think Byron Murphy has surpassed him. But, uh, yeah, in a trade down, Newton or Murphy would be – Great, and honestly, Murphy could be in play at nine. Jen says, Harrison, what are the chances you think we get MHJ? I don't know, 7%. I, I wouldn't rule it out. If it does go four quarterbacks to start the draft, which we'll see, I think it at least is a possibility at that point because the Chargers have been a team rumored to be willing to trade down at five. So, you know, maybe you trade nine and a second next year to get up to five or something like that. But – um, I, I don't think it's great. A 7, 10%, a chance, but not a great one. Julian Gonzalez, do you think Jack Sanborn has another level to him? I mean, I think he's a guy that can continue to improve, but he's not going to be a guy that like takes huge jumps, which he doesn't really need to be. He's already a good player. I think he's proven he's a starting caliber linebacker in this league. He can be a number two uh, on a uh, kind of a nickel situation. The beauty here is he's your third backer, so... Um, I think he's kind of one of those guys that, due to his athletic traits, high floor, low mid ceiling. So, which is fine. They got him as an undrafted free agent. Like he's a solid NFL linebacker. Which, for when they got him and how little he costs, that's uh, that's terrific for the Bears. 
Follow me on Instagram. It's at HGramNFL, posting short-form content, photo posts, and a whole lot more around the Bears on a daily basis over there. So if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing on that platform, give me a follow at HGramNFL. More to come over there. All right. One more segment to go. What is your confidence level in Ryan Poles scale from 1 to 10? Confidence level in Polesy. The live poll creeping closer to 50-50. 52% of Dunze. Bum of Wall Street says 9. Jen says 9.5. Tom says 8. Um, Paleo with a question here. I think he was on that list. If I'm remembering. Oh, he, oh, interesting. He asks if the Bears have met with Talise Fuaga. Double check in here. It actually isn't on the initial list, but that doesn't mean they won't. They're still doing top 30s. They still have like 13 openings in their top 30s. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I hope they do because he's an intriguing player, man. I, I think after Joe Alt, he had the best tape last year at offensive tackle. Uh, the question is, can he play left side? So if you draft him, either you're projecting that he can play left tackle or you feel confident in moving Darnell Wright over there that he can play there because you're not going to bench Darnell Wright for Fuaga. Like, Darnell Wright's a cornerstone on this offensive line. So um, I hope they do, Paleo, if they haven't already. But um, on the list uh, we uh, put together and found, uh, they haven't yet. So um, I would expect that to happen, though, no doubt about it. All right, uh, we got one more segment here. Uh, this one inspired from Michael Horowitz, who was our Super Chat MVP on Monday. Why haven't the Bears been successful at quarterback, and why could it change this time around? That's coming up next here on Chicago Bears Now. Chicago Bears Now is presented by Manscaped. It's National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Stay on top of that stuff and also get 20% off all of their men's grooming products with promo code BEARS20 at manscaped.com. All right, big episode today. Shout out to Michael Horowitz, who was our Super Chat MVP the other day. The MVP got to choose a topic of their choice that we would do turn into an episode and what he wanted to do is for me to talk about why the Bears have struggled to either find good quarterbacks, develop good quarterbacks, and then I'm adding the twist of why I believe it could and quite frankly should be different this time around with Caleb Williams. Excited to dive in. Loaded episode here. But listen, playoffs? Can the Bears be a playoff team next year if you want them to be in the playoffs in 2024? Hit that like button. Let's get 2,000 likes on today's show and get back into the postseason for the first time since 2020. Like this video today. I think to set the stage for this, let's kind of just look at some numbers here. It's, it's abysmal when you think about the history of this franchise at quarterback. Single season records. Eric Kramer with yards and touchdowns. 3,838 yards, 29 touchdowns. Mitchell Trubisky, Roley's favorite. 66.6% completion percentage. There's guys who are higher, but like, you know, they played like three games or something like that. So someone who actually started for at least a season, uh, Trubisky has the record there. And this has just got to end. I mean, the Bears are the only franchise that doesn't have a quarterback that's hit 4,000 yards passing and 30 touchdown passes. Uh, I think the Jets have hit just one of those, but even they've hit one of the two categories. And you don't want to be in a category with the Jets when it comes to quarterback play because they have not had great quarterback play either. So a lot of reasons why it hasn't worked. We're going to dive into those. A lot of reasons why I think it could or at least or even should work this time around with Caleb Williams. That is what's coming up, why I think it should work with Caleb Williams this time around. But let's dive into some of the reasons, and I'll give examples for each of these categories for why it hasn't worked. Well, the simple answer is they've drafted the wrong guy a lot of the time. Uh, in 2017, there's no better example. Mitch is a great dude. He wasn't a bad QB by any means. But when Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson were sitting there, and look, we know how the Watson stuff has played out, but there's no doubt in terms of what he can do on the field and especially was doing with Houston before the debacle happened, they chose the wrong guy in Trubisky over Mahomes and uh, Deshaun Watson. 
There's just no question. Not only did they choose the wrong one, they traded up and chose the wrong one. That hurts. I mean, there, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, there's other examples, but I think that's a more recent, relevant example to everyone watching this show. You got to evaluate and pick the right guy. It's not easy. If it was easy, every team would be able to do it. And obviously the Bears have not been able to do that. Now, it's not always about picking the right or wrong guy. I think a big problem throughout this franchise's history, and at times it's been a good thing, but especially in the modern era of football, the last you know 10 to 15 years, this team has just not historically placed enough emphasis offensively. I mean, when you think of the Bears historically, what do you think of? You think of these big physical linebackers, right? Briggs, Erlacher, Butkus. And they're all legends, and they're all awesome, and I wouldn't want it any other way in terms of the guys who have played here. But that emphasis defensively, I think, has been a direct correlation to why quarterbacks here haven't had success, at least partially, because they haven't had enough help. Think about this franchise's history. The receiving leader in yards is Johnny Morris. 5,000 yards. Justin Jefferson hit that in three years in Minnesota. DJ Moore might pass that, and he spent his first six, five, six years of his career in Carolina. Keenan Allen, who the Bears just traded for, has more than double career yards of Johnny Morris. Think about that. Ken Cavanaugh. Anybody heard of Ken Cavanaugh? Probably not, because he played in the 1940s, and Johnny Morris played in the 1950s. The point is, that is a great example that the Bears have not had nearly enough help as receiving threats to help quarterbacks. Like, sure, they've had Brandon Marshall for a few years, Alshon Jeffrey. Like, they've had little blips, Greg Olson, but not for an extended period of time, Allen Robinson for a few years. But the really good teams and offenses historically, they have big-time weapons for a long time. The Bears have never had that. I mean, ever. It's kind of incredible when you really, really think about it. Now, who is your favorite Bears wide receiver ever? I would say just a guy I enjoyed watching was Brandon Marshall. I just enjoyed the way he played. Obviously, he played for a bunch of teams, but he had a nice few years here. But again, you don't have that obvious guy to point to, and we're probably a good year or two away from that answer being DJ Moore for me because his year last year is about as good as any year a receiver has had for this franchise. All right, before we continue with this episode, uh, which we're in the negative part of it. We'll get to the positive. Speaking of positive, 20% off with Manscaped. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. Take advantage of the code and get the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Listen, it's the best ball hair trimmer on the market. Their advanced skin care technology. There's a second blade on this product, too, as they continue to improve it to just give you a better, more smooth shave. It's water-resistant, uh, so you can use it in the shower. Uh, you can also uh, have a long battery life with it. It's got a wireless charging station. Uh, it's got a light on it. So if you know there's some dimming issues in your house or whatever the case may be, you're going to be able to see all those tough spots to get. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. And uh, Manscaped's doing a cool thing, too, with uh, National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. They have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Go check that out, manscaped.com slash TCS to go learn more about that. And fellas, as you get older, I know it's scary to think about, but you got to stay on top of this stuff. You got to stay on top of your health. And uh, Manscaped's doing a cool thing, partnering up with them. It's a great cause. Go check it out, manscaped.com slash TCS. Okay, another reason why quarterbacks haven't worked here. Just an incredibly long list of revolving doors at offensive coordinator. Um, it is hard to overcome change in anything in life, right? Like consistent change, right? You know, they say change is good. And a lot of the time that's true, but not when it happens too often. And that's in any field. That's in any area of life. Uh, since 2000, the Bears have had 12 different offensive coordinators. Think about that. That's an average of one every other year. And only two, John Shoup and Ron Turner, lasted more than two years. That is tough to overcome, man. That is a lot of change. You know, I get it. It's an impatient world we live in. I wanted to fire Matt Eberflus after two years. I get all that. But that tells you one of two things. One, the franchise was, was too impatient. Or two, the guys they have brought in just suck. And I think that's a big part of it. I mean, you, you look at the list of coordinators who have been here in the last two decades. It ain't pretty. Um so, yeah, hopefully Shane Waldron can change that narrative soon. And if he's really good, yeah, he may only be here a year or two because he's going to be a head coach. But 
The guys that have been here a year or two the last two decades, yeah, they're not leaving to become head coaches. They're getting fired. That narrative needs to change. Uh, and then number four, and this kind of leads to a combination of all the stuff, just overall organizational failure. Timing not adding up. Justin Fields is a great example of this. He could not overcome just brutal timing of him being brought in here and why I'm calling this a raw deal. I mean, he gets drafted by Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, who were allowed to trade up for him in April of 2021. And even though we all knew there was a very good chance they'd be fired, which they were eight months later, um, and then they hire uh, Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus. Uh, and I think so far, especially for Poles, that's been good, and he's done a good job, but it wasn't great for Justin Fields. He had to tear down the roster because Ryan Pace left the salary cap situation here in shambles with some really backloaded awful deals. So he had to trade players away, cut them, eat, bite the bullet for 22 and somewhat in 2023. The Bears get the number one pick for a second straight year this past December after Justin Fields' up and down season where – Yes, we started to see more flashes, but still some inconsistent play. And then they trade Justin Fields because of that. And look, make no mistake, Ryan po Poles did the right thing cleaning up Ryan Pace's mess. It wasn't fair for Justin because he had no talent to work with in 2022, which Poles has acknowledged. Um, but that's just the way life goes sometimes, right? But the point is, is like, the organization failed Justin, and they've done that many a times before. I don't think they put Mitch in a great spot. The timing of head coach, GM, quarterback has not been aligned where this time around it actually could, which is why I actually would not fire Matt Eberflus after this year unless it's an absolute disaster because you need some continuity. That's why I wanted a new head coach, so you could build with this quarterback, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, so those are four big reasons why uh, quarterbacks have not had great success here. Here's the thing, it can change, and we'll tell you how in just a moment. But first, hit the subscribe button. We got daily Bears content for 100% free. Turn on those notifications uh, after you subscribe. That way you never miss out. You know exactly when we're going live, when we publish videos. We have fun. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Subscribe for daily Bears content. It can work this time. I don't want to be all doom and gloom and focus on the past. And, you know, I, I've been critical of those, you know, uh, people like J.T. O'Sullivan, who I really respect, but he's like, ah, I wouldn't want to go to Chicago. The history is the history, and I get that. And, and, and that does matter to an extent. But that doesn't mean what the Bears are doing here and now isn't setting up the next quarterback really, really well, which I think Caleb Williams is in a position to succeed here. For the first time in a while for a rookie quarterback, you have really good, I would say, clearly above average, if not like, I don't want to say great, but really good offensive personnel. You've got two really good receivers in DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, both who were top 10 in receiving yards last year. Ryan Poles called Keenan Allen the most friendly receiver he could find for a rookie quarterback. I'd say that's pretty high praise. Uh, Cole Komet and Gerald Everett, a pretty good one-two punch at tight end. Uh, they never found a secondary tight end for Justin Fields. Uh, you add DeAndre Swift uh, to the running back room. Khalil Herbert slides back into a role he's been good at for a few years now as that RB2. You got Roshan Johnson, who you're hoping to develop. I'm not saying this offensive skill group is unreal. I still think there's some things on the offensive line that can be better. But compared to what they've had, I would say this is an above-average offensive group to come into for a rookie quarterback. And number two, and again, this is even more projection. But on paper, this is a good offensive staff. Chris Morgan's a good offensive line coach. Shane Waldron has three years of play calling experience, helped revitalize Geno Smith. Thomas Brown, to get him as a pass game coordinator, I thought was great. Um, again, we have to see how it comes together. They have not coached this quarterback a single game, a single practice yet, so I'm admitting that is projection. But, like, if it's this staff versus Bill Lazor, uh, yeah, I will take uh, this staff all day long. Uh, you also have a top 10 defense to lean on. And I know earlier I said this team has been too heavily emphasized on the defensive side of the football, but I think for a rookie quarterback, it is important to not feel like you have to force the issue. And Caleb Williams at USC had to do that. Not only did he feel like he had to do that, he just straight up did. He doesn't have to press. This is actually going to be a rare situation where a quarterback leaving college to come to the NFL will actually be in a better situation, right? Like he... He is not going to have to score 50 points per game. So he could just develop, take the easy stuff, go be Superman like we know he can uh, when it's necessary. But uh, you don't have to feel like you have to score a touchdown on every drive 
uh, coming into this situation. And then just obviously the last piece of the puzzle is, what did I say earlier? They haven't always drafted the right quarterback, and we don't know for sure if Caleb's the right one in this draft. We could look up in three years, and maybe it'll end up being Drake May or Jaden Daniels. I'm projecting it to be Caleb. That's who I would take. I do think he's the best prospect. Now, will he be the best pro? Time will tell. It's a crapshoot. But he is supremely talented. He's got the full skill set, the arsenal. I think he's got the right mentality. But as we know... Yes, we can blame the organization and the coordinators and the pieces around them, but the quarterback has to be held accountable too. Like, that's what I said with Justin Fields, you know, and why I would have moved on from him. Yes, did he get screwed to a large extent? Absolutely. But was he still inconsistent? Were there still areas that he could have played better? For sure. The QB himself has to be good. Now, does Caleb Williams have to come in here and be a superstar from day one on the field, the top five QB in the league? No. But you got to see clear growth as a rookie. Like, going into year two, you got to feel like he's the guy – uh, and uh, I think there's a good chance with the structure in place where if he plays pretty well and it continues to improve this rookie year, um, that is going to lead to success. Does this any of this guarantee, guarantee anything? No. But you can't deny that this is a much better situation that a rookie's walking into. And oh, by the way, this rookie is more talented than Mitchell Trubisky and Justin Fields' prospects. That's just a fact. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But uh, I do really feel like this could be the one. The Chiefs never had got it right either until they did. Now, am I saying Caleb's going to be Mahomes? No, I'm not saying that. That's a silly comparison. But the point is, is organizations forever didn't have the guy until they did. Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. They didn't have a quarterback for 30 years. So uh, it, uh, it can happen. Don't feel like it can't. Be excited about the possibility. Will it work with Caleb Williams? Is he the one? Type Y for yes. Type in for no think he is. We don't know for sure. There's no way to know for sure, but I'm going to choose to be optimistic, and I think it can work this time. Hit that subscribe button if you agree, or if you just want daily Bears content. Bear down. More to come here on Chicago Bears Now. Andrew Freeman. Appreciate the dollar super chat. Ask a question next time. Poppy Chulo sits because kicking team can't run until the ball is tough. Only on kickoffs, though, not punts. Yeah. If you mean if you meant muffed kickoff, you could still muff a kickoff. Now, um, if you muff a kickoff, it's probably easier for the return team to get it because, yes, you can't move until the ball is touched. But, yeah, I mean, I you can still drop the kickoff. Like, if you muff the kickoff, it's not like it's just dead or something. That. But yeah, the new kickoff rule is only on kickoffs. I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, hopefully it does. All right. These kickoffs are going to take getting used to. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be four, five, six games of not being uncomfortable and just being like, yeah, this is unique. But like anything else, we'll get used to it. So we'll see how it plays. Uh, Dragon says, would rather trade for Justin back than get Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, that ship is sailed. By the way, Justin's wearing number two in Pittsburgh. They don't allow players to wear number one up there. All right, we're out of here. Rolly's got to get ready for a heat watch party. If you want to go check him out, he'll be live on the Miami Heat Report. They play the Philadelphia 76ers. Big game in the Eastern Conference. Uh, kind of impacts the Bulls, uh, potentially, in a uh, play-in scenario. Um, so, yeah, but if they get to that second game, the loser of this game could be in line to be that team, so... We'll see how it plays out. Go check that out if you want to. We'll be back soon with more content. Bear down as always.